What's going on everyone? Welcome back, Patrick here. And in this video, we're going to do this example over here. So a soccer ball is kicked off the ground. It reaches a maximum height of 10 meters after three seconds and it hits the ground at six seconds. Determine an equation for height as a function of time and the domain and range. So when I get a question like this, first thing I like to do personally is try to make a graph of the situation. And notice that what we're going to be doing is we're going to be modeling the height as a function of time. So notice the height, which in this case is in meters, is going to be the dependent variable. And then time, which is in seconds, is going to be the independent variable, right? Height as a function of time. So let's draw a rough graph of what's going on. Notice that a soccer ball is kicked off the, off the ground. So at time zero, the soccer ball is on the ground. So let's pretend that a height of zero, this is the ground over here. And then what's gonna happen is after three seconds, it's gonna reach a maximum height of 10 meters. So it's gonna reach that point right there. And then it's gonna come back down and it's going to hit the ground at six seconds. So over here. So notice that this is gonna be a parabola that looks like that with this maximum point here at a coordinate three and 10. Now, because we are starting at the origin and we were given the uh, maximum height here, the uh, time at which the maximum height occurs, we actually didn't even need to have this information that it hits the ground at six seconds. We could have figured that out because remember a parabola is always gonna be symmetrical. So if the x-intercept here is zero and then a maximum point occurs at an x value of three or a t value of three rather, so we got a t-intercept of zero and then at a t value of three, the maximum point is occurring then this distance of three, we would add a distance of three and we would get that other t-intercept. It always has to be symmetrical. So we didn't necessarily have to be given that six seconds, but the, uh, the question was nice enough to do that for us. So it hits the ground at six seconds. So it has an h value of zero at six again. Okay, so this is the graph of this scenario here. And what we have to do is determine an equation for the height as a function of time. And putting it in proper notation, we have to find h of t, the height as a function of time. So notice that this is a parabola here. So we know that our equation is going to be a parabola. And if you remember from grade 10, a parabola can take different formats. We could have it in vertex form, where we have y equals a x minus h squared plus k. And in this case, the vertex would be at h and k. Now, actually, another thing I want to mention is that this h here is different than this h, than this height, right? This h is for this scenario. This is kind of like, uh, think of it as maybe a side note, a review on parabolas, right? So you could have used any letter here, but usually it's shown with an h and k. But this h is different than the height. Right? This h here represents the x value of the vertex of any parabola. So you could have it in vertex form. You could have it in factored form as well, where you'll have a and then uh, x minus r, x minus s, where r and s are the uh, x-intercepts. Then you could have it in standard form, where y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And the format that I'm gonna use is this one over here because we're given the vertex. It's at three and 10. You could also do the factored form because you're given the two intercepts. And actually, you know what? I'll do the factored form quickly after as well. So I'll show you both of these here. And then the standard form we're gonna ignore for, uh, for this question here. So starting with the, um, with the vertex form, we're going to have h of t equals a 
put that A value, that's going to represent like a stretch or compression of the um, parabola, also any potential reflections in the X or Y axis. And then we're going to have X minus H. Now, in this case, we're not dealing with X values, we're dealing with T values. So I'm going to write T minus, remember this H value is the X value, the vertex. The X value, of the vertex in this case is three. So this is going to be three squared plus the K value, the Y value, of the vertex, which is 10. So that would be positive 10. Okay, so I'm going to erase this here. Give myself some room in case I need it. So if you remember, what we got to do now is we got to pick another point on the parabola and plug it in for T and H and then solve for this A value because this A value here can be anything. You can have an infinite amount of parabolas with a vertex at 3 and 10. Okay, they could be opening up. They could be opening down. We know this one's going to be opening down, so we know that A value is going to be negative when we solve for it. But it could be compressed. It could be stretched out, right? It can. Uh, there can be an infinite amount of parabolas that have a vertex at three and ten. So we got to find the specific A value at which, um, with uh, how this specific parabola is going to be modeled. So. We would pick another point on the graph. We could pick zero and zero actually, or we could pick six and zero. It doesn't matter which one we pick. We're gonna get that same A value. Let's pick zero and zero. I feel like that's the easiest one to work with. So we would plug in zero for H, zero for T, and now notice we just have to solve for that A value. That's the only variable in this equation. So we would have negative, zero minus three is negative three, negative three squared is nine, nine times a is nine a, and then this positive 10 we're gonna bring over is gonna be negative 10. And so divide both sides by nine, get the a by itself, we're gonna have negative 10 over nine. Okay, so the a value is negative 10 over nine. And so that there, is the height as a function of time we determine an equation, right? That's the answer to the first part of this question. Now, when you're solving for this A value and it's in vertex form, you can't plug in the vertex as a point for T and H when you're solving for that A value, right? It has to be another point other than the vertex. Because if we did plug in the vertex, notice you'd have three minus three here, which would be zero. Zero squared is zero and then multiplied by that a value of zero, the a value would disappear. We, we would have uh, nothing to solve for. So you got to pick another point other than the vertex. Now I told you as well that I would show you the factored form quickly. And remember the factored form is x minus the intercepts, right? Both brackets. So notice the intercept is zero and six. So we'd have x minus zero, x minus six. And if we make that look a little nicer, We'll have a x minus zero is just x, and then we'll have x minus six. Notice we have an a value to solve for here as well. And to solve for that a value, you want to pick points other than the intercepts, because if you do pick the intercept points, then you're going to get zero here or zero here, and then that a value is going to disappear. So when you're working with the factored form, then we can pick this point three and 10 to plug in for the h value and then the x value. And actually it shouldn't be x, my bad. This should be t the whole time. I keep forgetting that. Okay, so if we plug in uh, 10 for h, we plug in three for t, or sorry, yeah, three for t, and then we're gonna have the a value, and then over here we'll have three minus six. Notice we'll have three times negative three, which is negative nine and 10, and so the A value is gonna be negative 10 over nine. Okay, so another way to show this function is like that. This, this is T minus six, and this are the exact same thing. If you were to take this and expand it, take this and expand it, like foil this out, distribute this, you'd get the exact same um, expanded value. So both of these 
equations are correct. In my opinion, I think it's better to use this one. Whenever you're given a vertex, personally, whenever I'm given a vertex of a parabola, I always use the vertex form. Okay, so that is that. That is either answer for the first part of this question, an equation as a function of time. And now what we got to do is figure out what the domain and the range is. So notice that for a regular parabola, what would be the domain in this case? The domain would be, t can be anything. If this was just a regular abstract parabola with no word problem attached to it, notice the t value can be anything because technically this extends all the way down and it keeps going on forever. But because we're dealing with a word problem now, it's not just an abstract parabola, there's an actual limitation on t. Remember t represents time. And so notice that the time is going to be from 0 to 6 to when the ball hits the ground. And that's all that's going to be modeled for this situation. So the t value can be anything, but it actually has to be between 0 when the ball is launched or when the ball is kicked to when the ball hits the ground. That's the only time that we're going to be looking at for this specific scenario here. So there's a limit on t. And if we showed this in interval notation, we'd say t is an element from 0 to 6, and we would put square brackets there because it's inclusive of both of those. Now, what about the range? Notice that the range is the height, right? In terms of height, that is the dependent variable. And notice that the height is ranging from what? From 0 to when the ball is kicked and when the ball hits the ground to a maximum height of 10. So the range is h can be anything as long as it's between 0 and 10, like that. Or we would say h is an element from 0 to 10, inclusive of 0 and 10. Right? So when you're dealing with a word problem, be careful with your domain and range because usually there's going to be limits on both of those variables. So we got an equation of height as a function of time and the domain and range.